Hello dear crypto friends and welcome to this new day in the crypto market. Yesterday we had a brutal Bitcoin dump and today we are seeing finally some form of recovery. But the question is of course, will it be enough? Is this recovery genuine or what is going on? Will we go lower? So let's have a look. As always we start with our long term Bitcoin weekly chart. That is always a good starting point, right? And we are currently here, you see very near to the lower end of this long term logarithmic regression channel. I have drawn in the very important support here at the moving average of 290 weeks currently standing at 17,000. And let me also print the MA200 in dark blue, the moving average of 200 weeks. You can see that currently we are still below the moving average of 200 weeks. And in my last videos, I was theorizing that a likely target could be the moving average 290. But let us have a look now and try to understand if this is still the case or if something has changed. Now in the weekly chart, we see how still insanely oversold we are. This is the weekly RSI. It is the lowest ever in Bitcoin's recorded history. We are standing at an incredibly low 26.8. The previous lows were 28 in 28.6 in 2018 and uh, 28.1 in January 2015. So we are now even lower, which is just absolutely crazy to think about. But of course, this is no guarantee that we are indeed uh, at a low because the RSI, even being so low, could just still drop further. There's no law telling us that there is some kind of lowest possible RSI. Unfortunately, this law does not exist. So, of course, in theory, the RSI could just continue dropping and dropping and then we stay down for quite a long time. There is no law saying us that this is impossible. But, of course, it is unlikely. The more extreme a value becomes, the more unlikely it becomes that we stay at this value for long periods of time. Now, if we go into the four hour chart, that is where the action happens, right? Let me just deactivate the moving averages. This is where the action happens. And what do we see, friends? Let me activate the volume. Then what do we see? We see finally something very nice that we wanted to see. Finally, the volume here, you see the volume bars, the green volume. That means the buying volume has finally surpassed the selling volume. That is actually quite nice. So even though right now we are seeing that a bit of selling is happening again, the volume bars are a lot lower than these green volume bars that we had here. This green one especially outweighs even the red selling bars here in this drop. So this is not a bad sign. This could hint to a possible reversal, but it's still too early to be happy because if we look at the magnitude of this reversal, it is not so impressive yet, to be honest. Like we are from we, we went from 20,100 to 22,900. So this is not something to cheer about where we would say, wow, amazing, uh, incredible bounce. This is really a bit of a pathetic bounce if you think about how low Bitcoin actually went and that we went to 20,000 and that we retested the previous all time high of Bitcoin. So this is a bit of a pathetic bounce, which makes me a bit pessimistic, but the volume is already not bad. So if we are lucky, we could get a reversal. But of course, we all know the problem. Bitcoin is insanely correlated to the stock market, so much so that it's getting ridiculous. So Bitcoin is correlated to the Nasdaq so much so that I would say it's getting ridiculous. In orange, we see the Nasdaq with the candlesticks. We see Bitcoin. You see the insane, ridiculous amount of correlation. So when the Nasdaq goes down, Bitcoin goes down. When the Nasdaq bounces, Bitcoin also bounces. When the Nasdaq goes down, Bitcoin goes down. Now the Nasdaq went up again and Bitcoin recovered. But as soon as the Nasdaq is dropping again, what happens? Bitcoin is, of course, dropping again. So this is something that we don't like. We don't like Bitcoin to be treated like a tech stock because that is not the use case of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created to be some kind of digital gold. That is what we would like to see. 
for Bitcoin to decouple from the stock market and finally become the digital gold that it was promised to be. And because we know that the stock market is so very, very tight to the current economic environment and to the Fed rate hikes, yesterday, by the way, there was a 75 basis point rate hike announced, which is pretty high, I have to say. So bit, because Bitcoin is so tied to these things, the problem is that Bitcoin just follows what the stock market is doing and the stock market just follows macroeconomic events and the Fed policy. So if we look at the Nasdaq, yes, the Nasdaq did rebound yesterday. So after the Fed rate hike announcement, the market rebounded a bit. But of course, the problem is that the Fed has to hike aggressively, right? The Fed has to hike the rates quite aggressively. And that is, of course, not a good sign for Bitcoin. So what are now the possible scenarios that we could foresee? Now, of course, if we get a recession, if, for example, the Nasdaq was to just continue dropping like this, that, of course, would be insanely bad for Bitcoin. Then we can say that Bitcoin with a very high likelihood will go lower because we see just how very, very much correlated Bitcoin has become to the stock market. But if there won't be a recession, but something like stagflation, right? We could also enter a prolonged period of stagflation, as for example happened if we go back in time. This happened here in 1974-75. We see that here the stocks went down quite a lot. And then it happened again from, I think, 1978 to 1982. So these periods here, this one and this one, were two stagflation periods. So we see that the stock market behaved very differently. Here it went down a lot, but here it was just uh, going sideways with a bit of pump here in 1980. So it is a period where either we go down or we just go sideways and the economy is not uh, rising a lot. So in general, I would say it's just wobbling around sideways, right? We have a long period here. If you take a look at the period from 1968 until 1980, a long period of uncertainty and a long period where it's just wobbling around without any clear direction. So this could also happen right now. We could be looking at a stock market that will wobble around without any clear direction where we go up and down, up and down, and then at some point resolve to going up, right? This is now, of course, exaggerated. Probably it will not take so long, but just for visualization purposes, I've drawn it like this. So this would, of course, not be nice for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin stays coupled to the stock market, what would that mean? Well, let's go back to Bitcoin. This would, of course, mean in the long term channel here that Bitcoin would be wobbling around here in the lower band of this long term channel. And only at some point quite late in 2024 or 2025 would we start probably going upward again, probably as late as 2024. Because in 2024, there's the Bitcoin halving. And I think the Bitcoin halving will normally have a positive effect on the Bitcoin price growth. But nonetheless, if we look at the Bitcoin price chart, even as late as April 2025, that is still, we could still not make a new all time high. Because in March 2025, that is the time when the lower bound of this trend line will actually be at 68,000. So in theory, we could wobble around for three more years. And for three more years, we would not make new all time highs. Just think about that. That has never been the case before. Bitcoin could really wobble around here in $20,000, $30,000 range for years. Like we are talking years. For example, in late 2023, the lower band here is still at 33,000. So in, in one and a half years, we, we could still be as low as the low 30,000s. Just think about it. That is crazy. So that would be a very bad scenario. Therefore, we don't want stagflation to happen. But if we would get stagflation now, that is a scenario that we would have to live with, that Bitcoin would really linger around for a few years here in the 30,000 plus minus range. And then only as late as 2024, probably for the next Bitcoin halving, would we get a nice new push to the upside. That is, of course, a scenario we don't want to see. But currently, I'm thinking it is not so unlikely because if we look how Bitcoin is behaving, even at those insanely low support levels, it is still not rebounding with force. 
this leads me to believe that we really will wobble around here for quite some time and not get a strong bounce. So let us hope that stagflation will not happen because we, this will be super boring for Bitcoin. Now, of course, if we go into a recession, that could be really bad because Bitcoin has never seen a stock market recession before. Bitcoin has always only existed in a stock bull market because it was created after the recession of 2008-2009. So this could mean, if we really go into a recession, that Bitcoin actually breaks this logarithmic trend line. And then we wobble around at really low prices and the logarithmic trend channel has failed. We could go outside of this logarithmic trend channel. That would be the absolute worst case scenario. And then only when the next stock market recovery comes would Bitcoin go up again. That would be super bad. Now, what could save us? There are a few things that could save us from these dreadful scenarios. One, adoption. Bitcoin is driven by adoption. It is really different from a tech stock. That is why I hate that it's being treated like a tech stock. Because it's not a tech stock, obviously, right? It has to be adopted. So Bitcoin adoption will, of course, accelerate price appreciation. Then we would like Bitcoin to see decouple from the stock market and become more coupled to gold because Bitcoin is a safe haven asset. That is how it was intended to be. So if adoption continues, I think more retail investors will flock in and the power of those institutional investors will be diminished because they are the guys that are treating Bitcoin like a risk asset. They are the ones that are treating it like a tech stock. Okay, so the power of them will be diminished. And of course, what will also save us is probably the halving in the year 2024. So we have to hope that Bitcoin will be adopted more by more retail investors and that the halving 2024 comes to the rescue or that by some miraculous event, Bitcoin will decouple, will decouple from this nasty correlation with the stock market. And then it will start decoupling and go upwards again as it was intended to be and will maybe become coupled more to gold. If we just overlay the gold chart, we see that there were periods in Bitcoin's history where it was sometimes a bit coupled to gold, right? We can see that here, for example, both gold and Bitcoin rose in 2019, right? And then they both went down. And here gold in orange and Bitcoin both dumped in March 2020. But lately we see that they have been more anti-correlated, right? Because Bitcoin has started to become more correlated with the stock market. And gold normally is a bit more anti-correlated. So for example, it is very noteworthy that in March 2021, gold and Bitcoin were super anti-correlated. And here also, like Bitcoin was pumping, but gold was like just wobbling around. But then again, they were more correlated here. So the hope is that Bitcoin will just decouple from the stupid stock market and become the safe asset that it was intended to be and will couple more, for example, to gold and that people will see it as the safe haven asset that it actually was intended to be. But of course, we don't know if that will happen and how that will happen and how fast that will happen. Our hope is really that retail investors will start flocking again at some point into Bitcoin. So friends, this is my current picture. I'm not super optimistic because this bounce uh, should be normally stronger at these low levels. But we see that even though Bitcoin is so low, it is still just following the stock market like, like ri it's ridiculous. Really, I, I'm sorry to say this, but this is not what Bitcoin was intended to be. This is ridiculous. So it is treated like a tech stock. And at these levels, we should see brutal bounces. But this is not yet happening. So I'm not super optimistic yet. If the stock market decides to go lower, if the Nasdaq suddenly decides to go lower, because we know that the Fed will continue hiking aggressively, then I'm afraid, friends, that Bitcoin will just linger around here and we will not see amazing price action maybe if we are unlucky for like one or two years that is a worst case scenario but right now this is not looking amazing and until i'm not seeing a super nice reversal for example like we are getting a nice pump to twenty-five thousand, and we finally see some nice weekly green candles until that doesn't happen with very high volume until that doesn't happen 
I'm still remaining not so super optimistic. That is my current picture. I wish I would be more optimistic, but I hope it will change soon. And we can hope that Bitcoin will change its behavior in the next one or two years due to adoption, having or other unforeseen events. Thanks for watching, friends. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe. I would be happy to welcome you on this small but growing channel. I will make daily updates on Bitcoin and the crypto market and the correlation with stocks and other assets so that we can try to understand what the crypto market is going to do. Have a nice day, friends, and then see you in the next update video tomorrow. Bye.